The following is a podcast from a qualified senior care provider heard on the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders radio show heard across the USA. And we are so delighted again each week to talk about different aspects when it comes to seniors and boomers and all the things that we face later in life. And I am so proud to have this guest. This is a lady that I have known for a while and a lady by the name of Kristen Christian. And she's an entrepreneur, business owner, and a franchiser and a professional organizer. And through all of those things, Kristen founded B organized in 2015 with her business partner, Lisa Foley. And they she serves, Kristen serves as the chief marketing officer for the business. And I really want to talk today about clutter, about getting your life simplified and how many of us boomers have lived in a life full of consumption. We, you know, who has the best thing on the block and we're always buying new things, but how many things get replaced or sent out the door? Not often. And so we find ourselves looking at these areas in our home where we're going, oh my gosh, how in the world, you know, can I deal with this? It gets too much. And this is where we go down the rabbit hole. And so I am so delighted to have again, Kristen with us. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I'm so delighted to be here. It's my favorite topic to talk about. <laughs> I know it is your favorite, and you're so good at it too. And, you know, Kristen, I, I just went through a major purging process myself. This studio that you're looking at, um, and when we're here, you're going to see me on camera if you go to YouTube. Um, the thing that's really powerful about this process is I just went through it. The room that I am in, is my recording studio. I love it. Um, before, <laughs> before this year, we did this over the Christmas holidays, right? Um, before this year, I had a little corner back there in my um, area <laughs> and I make- had it blocked off and it was my junk room and everything in the world was here. I mean, I had linens that I hadn't used in years. I had uh, utility shelves <laughs> that were up. And then I had, it was just ridiculous how much crap I had. And I'm saying crap because it was so powerful. And I have to thank my husband because he's much more organized than me. And he helped me and we purged this room. And I can't believe how much stuff I had. And, you know, I don't think of myself as being, you know, out of control, but I was out of control. I didn't even realize it. Right. I, Kristen, I know I'm not alone, but I have to tell you how I feel now. Every time I walk into my studio, I love it. I'm proud of it. I worked hard to get there and mm-hmm. I am so grateful. And I really want to share that feeling with all of our listeners. So Kristen, tell, I mean, I know that I'm not unusual about this, right? Not at all. You're a convert though, right? (laughs) I I I bottle it up, that feeling. It literally is so physically freeing, but also mentally freeing. And that feeling that you had is what I absolutely love about what we do and, and Mm -hmm. helping people come in and grasp the understanding. And when you're talking about you know, downsizing, it's just a math equation. If you're going from a big place to a smaller space, you're going to have to minimize. And so it's hard though. I love that you said your husband helped you because to do it alone is really hard. We get it was really hard. In, yeah. In the rabbit holes. And it's, it's emotional because we have a relationship with our stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a unique perspective on it. A lot of people yeah. think that we have a relationship well, with our stuff. And I think too, this is the interesting thing. What I was looking at, it was just overwhelming. I, it's like, I couldn't get started, but here's the thing that happened. As I started to make progress, I gave myself two weeks to do this. So I wasn't in a hurry. I did a little bit at a time and I, you know, I still had to do my show in between. So I still had that corner, (laughs) but the thing that was really powerful about this process was the fact that 
then I got excited and I started throwing more things out. It was like, you know what? I haven't used this in, in two years. Why do I have it? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. There's so many things kind that happen through that process. So I got do. excited. And I'm going to tell you later today, I have my housekeeper is coming in and we're doing a deep clean, which uh, is going to do, you know, cleaning it. the chandeliers, getting yes. the pantry, all of those things. So this is what it sparked in my life. And I have to tell you what it feels that, you know, for me, and I really needed to share that. And, but you talk about a relationship with your stuff. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. Well, it's just like we have to have a, you know, we have a relationship with food and we need food to live. Mm -hmm. Where are we on that spectrum? Is Uh it healthy or is it unhealthy? A lot of times for all of us, it's somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the same can be said about our stuff because you called it crap. You know, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it vacillates between, is it valuable from a a sentimental emotional standpoint or monetary, or is it truly just junk that Mm -hmm. layers up? And it, what's interesting is though, the minute something crosses the threshold of our home, mm-hmm. it's not just stuff, it's our stuff. And all of a sudden True. you have to clean it and manage it and fix it and move it and pack it and monitor it and all that kind of stuff. So you, it's entered into your life and it's taking up brain space. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking minor things, a box of crayons, a yeah. plant. But the more that you come in, just like you said, your, your store, you know, your junk room, our lives are Mach 80, right? And so yeah. it adds up and add to that, that we're Americans and we love to consume. Oh now, God. You know, this is but a shocking statistic yeah. is that North America is part of 12% of the population that does 60% of private consumption spending. And with that, I mean, our wow. jobs should be on the ground. The fact that yeah. 12% of the population is doing 60% of the spending, we're all doing it. Things have gotten a lot easier and less expensive to get, but we haven't changed our attitude, our relationship. No, we haven't. Especially I'm saying with boomers, uh, you know, our children or Gen X, they, they don't want this China. They don't want all this stuff that we have. They right. live more simply. They have a different mindset. And that's something that we should all, you know, learn from. And I think that's right. one of the things that happened to me. And I really wanted to give that testament up front. So you talk about Downsizing can be an art, and that's what we're calling this episode today. Tell me a little bit about that, and what does that mean? Right. Well, I think saying the art of downsizing and crafting that art and working at that art puts a a happier, more positive spin, because I don't Mm -hmm. know about you, but you say the word downsizing, and people, they instantly recoil because that sounds, one, very hard, very emotional very time consuming um, and difficult. And what I love about kind of putting the spin on it of the art of downsizing is use this as an opportunity to shed what has piled up kind of that layered cake in your junk room and your home, Mm -hmm. your attic, and use it as an opportunity to really um, curate what you're bringing into that next chapter Mm -hmm. of your life and make sure that you are only bringing items that you absolutely love, need, and use and that help you live a better life. And I am, I I'm so passionate about people crafting an environment that supports them Mm -hmm. and helps them be a better version of themselves. But the process is so hard. And and I think it's hard. And and I really, we're going to talk about that in the next segment, but mm-hmm. I really want to emphasize to everyone um, what you're saying, because every time I walk into my studio, I love it. I love being in here. I love the surroundings that I have. I have this wonderful relationship with my room and I've never felt that way about an office before or an area that I work in. And, and it's all me, you know, I put every, you know, idea together thinking about what to do. So it is an art. It is the fact of you're utilizing your own creativity to 
represent you and to have these surroundings around you. And so, you know, I encourage everyone to look at our YouTube videos because you're going to see where I was before and where I am now. That really tells a story of how things can change your life. And it certainly has changed my perspective. So right. Kristen and I are going to be right back right after this. And we're going to talk a little bit about the emotional side of downsizing, purging, decluttering, however you want to call it. And we'll be right back right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com. 